My name is Lance McCormack and I'm a time serve panel beater, traditional panel beater, and I trained at Mulliner Park Ward, Rolls Royce's coach building division in London. How big would that have been when that, that was on Hyde Road, was it? So it was in Hyde Road, North West 10, and uh, uh, you know, when it was on full swing there with the two sites fully operational, there would have been about 1,600 people working there. It was very big. It was, yeah, it was. Um, it, we were making the Corniche and its variants, the Phantom 6, up until 77, the Camargue. Um, there were there were lots of special projects going on there as well. You you, know? you did all the special projects there. So I say crew would have built the the standard car, the standard, standard still car. still yeah. car. But Mulliner Park Ward was by that time uh, it, well it, initially it was owned by Vickers, but it was the in-house coach builders. Um, and Northwest London had a strong tradition of that with Hoopers, uh, people like Vandenpla, Corsica. They're all in that area. There have been suggestions why that was. Perhaps there were um, the skill set there. there. There were aircraft companies there, uh, and there, there was previously one, yeah, were pre, there pre, World War Two. Yeah, so there were, and World War One, you know, and even World War there. One. Yeah, really? so so there's, there was it was a, a lot of industry around there that the, the coach builders drew from. You know, of course Bentley Motors in, in Cricklewood as well. Yeah. So so um, yeah, no, Northwest was like this kind of that was like the Savile Row of coach building of English coach building. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And, Mulliner Park Ward was bought by Vickers, who owned mm -hmm. Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I've forgotten now when that date was, um, but at that stage it was owned by Rolls Royce. Yes, when you joined. That's it. When I joined there, you know. And how did you come about? You lived in the area, I'm guessing. Right. I was a typical West London lad, you know. Um, we're, we're at school. I, did, I wasn't. It wasn't the time when everyone went off to university. Obviously, the, the, the kids that have been to grammar school, we just came from comprehensives. So you get to hear that you can go for an interview at Rolls-Royce, you know, and you think, well, that sounds good, you know, prestigious and whatever. So we went along and uh, there was a massive amount of applicants for the jobs that were there. I think they had a, a yearly intake of 40 and there's something like six or 800 people uh, that went for the for the interviews. Wow! Yeah. So it was very exclusive yeah. to get. Uh, yeah, you were, an you, were, you, were, you were lucky. You were blessed to get. You were there. made for life. If you, I presume the training was so. The training was intense. Actually, yeah. you've you sort of come off of this sort of winging it, and you're 16, and then suddenly you're in a a, a training school that was like a military camp. Actually, yeah. was it? Yeah, even even the people that were running it, you had an ex RAF guy, Vernon Hodges. Uh, you had Ken Stanley, these names are like antique in themselves, and Harry Snooks. But you know, they were very, very strict. Yeah. And I presume there was four, I presume you were all boys. Yeah, all boys. There, yeah. there, were, there were no girls, and I'm sure it's, and, it's all changed now. Yeah. yeah. And the, the training process, would that all 40 of you were doing the same training? Or uh, well, they the, would have said, no, you're doing body work, you're no, doing. Well, the, there was a, the first year, there was a broad based training in the training school. Uh, and in conjunction with a day release at, at uh, Wilston College in Northwest London again, but you knew what you were going to be. But you shared the training school with fitters, you know, mechanics, trimmers, and what have you. And we did a bit of trimming, a bit of electrical work, a bit of mechanical work. But we knew where we were going, and um, we did machining as well, you know, with lathes and shaping machines. So it's to give us a full introduction uh, into the into the car build, you know. So let's. It's hard to imagine. Uh, we're in the seventies. Uh, Nineteen seventy-six. And you were sixteen. Se you... September seventy-six. I was just sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Wow. So you're obviously messing around, but suddenly you go into this environment. It's the real. It's the real thing. Yeah. It's that's the real it. yeah, thing. Yeah. And did they have big factory gates? Do you have to climb? What, what was it, it like it, going it was, into it? It was slightly dehumanising. You were clocking in. Uh, if you were late for more than three times for more than three minutes in a week, that was your first warning. And bear in mind, three three warnings, and they could sack you. Yeah. So you had to, and, and there were many a time I was cycling on the canal, like Billy O, you know, to that that to last sprint to get, yeah. to get there on time. Um, uh, yeah, that, so it was it was very strict. It was it felt like you were being broken, to be honest. Which you yeah. probably were. We were. Yeah, I, well, yeah. I turned I turned up there. I had a, um, peroxide short hair. Yeah, you know, I was a. a an early punk, for, we were going to the Roxy Club. Wow, not, not, okay. not, not this Mohican business that was yeah. to come later. And, and uh, I was regarded as a curiosity. I'm sure. Yeah. Did they not have, 
I presume they had a dress code. Or yes. Look. Were yes. they beginning to slightly yeah, yeah, yes and no. change? Yeah. Social yeah. order yeah. in London was beginning to change. Yeah, at that but stage. you did have at that point the, the filth and the fury with the, the pistols on the television. That, uh, uh, you know, so rock, they knew. Rock, and they, they knew that there was an outsider, <laughs> was... an outsider within. <laughs> yeah. but, that, but then again, I, um, I was to find out that both Paul Cook and uh, Glenn Matlock's fathers from were, the Sex Pistols were, were working there. In Rolls-Royce? In Rolls-Royce, yeah. The iron. <laughs> yeah, and in recent years, in the uh, last couple of years, I got to know Glenn Matlock very well, and from talking to him at a bar once at the, at the Chelsea Arts Club, and I, I just introduced myself to him by saying, I work with your dad. And he said, where? And I said, Mullen the Park Walls. Said, really? You know, and we became friends. Yeah. He said, I used to work there sometimes in the summer. You know, in the offices. So, so you have one of the sex pistols who worked there. But yeah, I was, I, I was certainly a curiosity.